Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St Mary's to uh, our service of thanksgiving and deconsecration. I'm just going to adjust the camera slightly so we get Bishop Mary's head in the picture because I think that would be. Take my picture. I put my. I had angled it down so we could see the flowers, but heads are more important. Yeah. So take my phone case out from under the bottom of the tripod. And it's it we good now. Okay. I've somehow managed to make it, and I'm going to rotate it slightly so I get all of Michelle. I, it's obviously a little bit tricky from a tech perspective this morning, but we're going to try and we're going to do our best, and okay. we'll see what we do. And we're going to start with a prelude from Marie, which is Be Not Afraid, which seems very appropriate while we just take our positions and get settled. So good morning, everyone, and welcome. Good morning. Yeah, it's, um, it's a little bit of a different service today, for sure. Um, it's going to be longer than usual. Uh, we decided that that was just how it was. Today, if you're watching, um, I think it's because you, you want the full experience, and so we didn't try to cut anything out to make it short. Uh, if you are watching today and St. Mary's isn't a place where you visited, thank you for being with us um, and for supporting this really um, solemn moment. Is that too serious a word to use? I think it is a solemn moment. Yesterday when we were uh, having our open house sort of walk through, for, give people an opportunity to um, walk through the building one last time, I was playing through a lot of music as people were doing that, were walking through, and it's a very long time since we've sung Be Not Afraid. Uh, but um, it's certainly among, one, amongst one of the first ones I learned when I first came here 30 years ago, uh, and I thought it'd be appropriate to play it a little bit this morning. Thank you. Um, hopefully the sound works okay. I wanted to just do a few notices as well now because then we can flow through the rest of the service um, in, a, in a focused way. So firstly, actually, this is, this is a pretty much a year, not exactly to the day, but close to a day since our first online service because of COVID. Um, a lot's, lot's happened in the last year, but really I wanted to just thank everyone for their flexibility and the support and for staying together. It's been a long year and, um, and, and it's obviously a big deal. And this is a very strange experience being in a service of deconsecration online with welcome to Bishop Mary and to Archdeacon Michelle, who are um, obviously here this morning. So it's been a strange year. Um, and thank you for all of you who came yesterday for the walkthrough as well, or who commented on the online one. Uh, it was really good to see the history and, and to have that laid out and to see so many people. Obviously a very sad day, bittersweet really, because on the one hand it was beautiful to see people and get together and have one last walkthrough. Uh, on the other hand, it's obviously very sad and you, know, you can see the potential, but then you can also, you're never far away from hearing the drips through the roof in this building. And uh, that was a backlog to it as well. Finally, um, very glad to say that Ruth is back listening to us today. I think she's convalescing um, in, in hospital still, but is able to hear. I know Angie's on the phone. Um, I know many of you are joining on Facebook, so thank you and, and, and welcome. Uh, sorry? And YouTube. And, and YouTube as well. Uh, yes, thank you, Ardi, for setting up the YouTube. Uh, final thing, we're nearly packed. The movers come tomorrow. Um, we'll, we'll settle a few more things today and during tomorrow. The piano and the, um, the treasures, as I call them, the, the holy hardware and the, the things that we really have to keep hold of, like vestry books and, and the history of the place, 
that will be going to John the Baptist. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you to Lorne Eason. Um, and we're, we're going to set a little bit up in the, um, the parish hall, I think, where there's a stage and we've got some space there. The rest of our stuff that we're going to keep, um, Ardy has arranged some storage um, at a place, which is fantastic. Uh, mainly, though, I want to say thank you to all of you who've worked so hard to get stuff boxed up, cleaned up, sorted out, triaged, thrown out. Uh, I know there's, there's too many people to mention individually, except I will mention Ardy individually because I think she's... Without her, we would be sunk. Um, we really uh, would be sunk and, without Artie. Uh, make uh, sure you've got your microphone right in front of your mouth there, Richard. Pardon? Make oh, sure. make sure I have my see? microphone. See? Oh, so <laughs> I have to do that. And now I'm not moving for the rest of the service. Okay. Uh, but thank you to Ardy, who has been magnificent, and I'm sure is very tired. So mm. um, thank you. Did I have any more? Oh, yeah, next week. There is a next week as well. because although, although the building is closing, St Mary's is not closing. So next week at 9.30 on Wednesday, there will be Zoom at Book of Common Prayer, led by Jane. At 10 o'clock, there will be our regular online worship. On um, Sunday. On Sunday. And Claire is, after uh, the great success of the soup exchange, uh, there will be a baking exchange for Easter. So if you're a recipient of soup, you should look forward to recipienting cake. Uh, uh, <laughs> if, you were, if you are a baker of soup, uh, you should, or a baker, a baker of soup, you should be ready to bake cake. Um, so that's uh, in the works. Food. Food is a characteristic of St. Mary's. Yeah, food is absolutely... That we take with us. Yes. And, and I know a few people talked to me yesterday about what's next. And really it is one step at a time. Uh, but we, we, you know, I, I heard lots of views yesterday about what we should do next, what the next steps could be, would be, what people would like. Um, rest assured that we'll, as soon as we possibly can, there'll be a real time to get together and express that. Uh, hopefully in person if the if things just lighten a little bit because it is so much easier to hear everyone in person uh, but if not we will do our best with zoom as we've done for the year and that was all i wanted to say for introductions bishop mary would you like to say a few words and also test your mic at the same time okay i'm testing my mic oh you might, you need, might to need to bring it closer, closer to you, I think. Um, if you can and then speak right into it and make sure yeah i think that one's quite you have to be quite close to it to make it work all right, do you hear me now? Much better, okay. so much better, perfect. I just can't see my words, but that's okay. You could sit and lower it. Okay. We, we were okay. doing this before the service. We were, we but were it's... We uh, other things. Yeah, and until you, until you start, you don't really realize, and so that's okay. Everybody understands. All that's right. what we've discovered. Uh, People are very that? forgiving. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Somebody comment and let us know if you can hear Bishop Mary. <laughs> oh, you can hear me. Good. We can hear you. I think it's good. Yeah. All right. Well, it's good to be here with you, and um, you'll hear more about what I'm thinking and feeling and hoping for you all, but I just want to begin by saying thank you to Richard and Marie for uh, running services uh, for a year and figuring out how to do a service on Facebook Live, and to Ardith, who's done so much in the background, and uh, the other wardens, and to Michelle, Archdeacon Michelle, who's been helping uh, the process along. And, um, but especially Richard and Marie, thank you so much for your leadership here. Thank and you. Uh, thank you. God bless you on the journey. Yeah, thank you. It's been a privilege for sure. Yeah. Privilege for the last year and privilege for the last 25, even. So. Are we ready to sing our first song, Richard? Yeah, very appropriately, it's one voice. Yeah, this actually, um, a couple years ago, it was what, it was our Lenten theme song when Nick was with us. It, one of the years, it was our Lenten theme song. Uh, and actually, we sang it. Um, I don't remember if it was the first one we sang online, but it was definitely in our first online service. And it seemed really appropriate to sing and bring in today. This can be hard, I could tell. I wasn't sure if it was going to be hard or not, if I was going to keep it together or not keep it together. Sometimes I get detached and then sometimes I'm not. I think it'll be... Um, I think I, I have two Kleenexes in my pocket. After that, you're out of luck. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, thank you. Um, actually, my kids are here. Ben and Annie are over there. You can't see them right now, but I know if I need tissue, they'll run and get some for me. Thank you. Actually, you know what? Just because we mentioned that, I'm going to read this now. Um, I think it's a context uh, that can be set for all of us. 
This morning, Annie arrived at church ready to um, be a part this morning of the service, and she and Ben both had some little gifts for me. Um, and Annie wrote me this note. She said, Dear Mom, this is the last service ever in this building, the last time playing here. You've played here for so long, and it's very sad we're leaving. But before we leave, I have to say thank you. You've always worked in this church, playing music for my whole life. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. Thank you so much. Love, Anna Lynn. Thank you, Annie. That's beautiful. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread that he may live in us, and we in him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing another song now, is that right, Richard? Yes, we're going to sing I Feel the Winds of God. Perfect. Um, we tried to, there were so many songs we wanted to sing this morning, I can't even tell you. The list was super long. I was pretty glad that we did the Gather Round event a couple weeks ago, because for those who had songs that really meant a lot to them, we were able to sing them together on Zoom, and that was such a good thing. Uh, there's a few that we're repeating just because they really do represent so well St. Mary's and who we are. Um, but there's no doubt we could have chosen approximately 20 other songs to fully represent our, our community and our history together today. 
it felt important to do this one, I Feel the Winds of God. It got brought up um, when we were on that Zoom, actually, as one we might like to sing today. I particularly remember it as the special request of, or, or the I should say the, the favorite hymn of um, Reverend Frank Toop. And we sang this uh, at the service of Thanksgiving and dedication uh, that we did in uh, the year after they were murdered in 1990. They were murdered in 95. And we had that special service in 1996. I think it was about a year after, after the event had occurred. And this was definitely an important hymn um, to Frank and to all of us as we, um, as we, as we remember to them and we remember, we remember them again today. And maybe at the same time, all those actually who have been a part of our community but have passed, um, who aren't here with us anymore, but whose presence and contribution we treasure and we continue to hold in our hearts. Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, Lord have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. And write both, both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. thee. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. Most merciful God, Father, Father of our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, we confess, we confess that, that we have sinned in thought, thought word, word, and, and deed. We have, we have not, not loved you with our whole heart. heart. We, we have, have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. ourselves. In, in your mercy, mercy forgive, forgive what we have been. Help, Help us to amend what we are, are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sin, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Our next song is called uh, Rebel Heart. And Rebel Heart was also one of our Lenten theme songs uh, last year or the year before? I think the year before. Two, two years, I think. Two years ago. Um, and it became a favorite of many from all the different uh, groups uh, that we have here at St. Mary's. Um, I believe that the people at the early service, you guys um, seem to really enjoy and respond to it. And uh, also at the 10 o'clock. And I know it's an important song also for Mary Bannershill um, when um, uh, I've lost it all. When Joey, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm just managing so many things right now inside my emotional self. Um, it's causing problems. But um, an important song for Joey. Uh, and I know that I, I feel like Joey's one of those people that St. Mary supported in, in different ways, in, in different, different guises, um, a little bit from a distance, sometimes closer, sometimes not so much. Joey used to call our house all the time. Um, and one would talk to him, and um, I feel like it represents maybe um, when I was thinking about having this song as part of our service today, thinking maybe it represents um, all the people that have been touched, whose lives we've reached out to, to each other and to people really within the community, but also beyond, um, and just thinking about the lyrics of the chorus that are, I give it over to you. Um, giving it over to love and generosity and charity and and just giving it all over to the spirit of that, the, the incredible power of the spirit of that and remembering all the lives that were touched through it every time we said yes to love and to God. Yours. 
service over this past year, some different things have uh, woven their way into the fabric of what we do. And part of that has been to make a space for um, other voices to speak here um, through different means, through songs, through quotes, and also through poems. And Today's no different, we're gonna have a poem today. This is a poem by Wendell Berry, who you may know, he's a 20th century um, dude. Uh, he was a po poet, uh, essayist, um, various things. You could look him up, you could Google him. Very much uh, environmentally oriented, and that has been a big part of many of the things that we've done here at St. Mary's. Um, we've worked with the bees and many other things to be aware of, of all of that, uh, not just of the people of this world, but the world that we live in and taking care of it. Someone, um, a friend sent me this poem. Not in the frame. I'm not in the frame, thank You're, you. But just, artist can change it. Artist can fix it for us if we need to. Um, not in the frame, that's not cool. Uh, well, you're, anyhow, you're half in the frame. I was half in the frame. Uh, I moved. Maybe I shouldn't have moved. If I'm sitting here already, am I in the frame here? Yes, okay, I just won't move. I'm sorry for moving. <laughs> um, so this, this, this poem by Wendell Berry called The Peace of Wild Things was sent to me by a friend this week, and it really spoke to me. Uh, and I think it is, represents, represents a lot, and I think, I hope it will speak to you today. When despair for the world grows in me, and I wake in the night at the least sound, in fear of what my life and my children's lives might be. I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water, and where the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water, and I feel above me the day-blind stars waiting with their light. For a time, I rest in the grace of the world, and am free. One of the other things that we've woven into what we do together is experimenting with different mindfulness practices and different uh, methods of contemplative prayer and meditation. And even though this service is going to be long, we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> uh, we just decided that um, of all the services, we want to represent all the things that we are, uh, both uh, historically and more recently, because it's a story that keeps being told. It's easier for me not to cry when I sing and play, because I'm used to like pulling it together to do the music, but when I'm talking, I'm less used to that. Anyway, we'll try and see what happens. Um, I'd invite you now, therefore, to 
make yourself comfortable a little bit. We're going to take a few moments to rest in a quiet and contemplative space together, both those of us who are lucky enough to be here in the building, um, but also all of you who are watching either live or later. We're united together by, by our common humanity and by our desire to have a place in this world that is filled with love and with light. So feel your space, feel where you're sitting, feel what is supporting you. Take a few breaths. Notice how the breath of life comes in and out of you all day long. Whether you're thinking about it or not, it supports and it sustains you just as love supports and sustains us. If you are participating today and this building is a place that has meant something to you, I would invite you in your imagination to picture yourself here. Maybe you even have a spot on a pew that is kind of yours. You could picture yourself there if you like. If this building is not something that has meant something to you, but you're watching and participating today because of the community, I invite you to imagine any place that you would like, somewhere that is restful and peaceful to you. You can imagine yourself sitting in your pew, as I said, first on your own, and feeling the quiet stillness of the place around you. <coughs> Maybe memories will come up for you of things that have gone on here. Maybe of experiences that you had, emotions that you have felt, and just let them flow through you. Maybe they'll run before you in your mind like a, like a film or pass through your heart. Inevitably, as memories, as memories flow through, so do people. I invite you to start to populate the church around you. Bring in, bring in the people that you've known here, past and present. the people that you have loved and the people who have loved you. You can let each one stand before you for the time of the breath. Take the in-breath for yourself and breathe in the love and the spirit that you have known in this place and let your out-breath be one that passes that on to the person you can see before you. Take some time to do that and know that we're filling, we're filling the place together with all the souls.
I think there are probably hundreds in here now, maybe thousands. There's so many people that could be thought of. I think of Pat Roberts and Ethel and Eileen and Nadine too. I hope she gets to see this. I think of Judy, Frank and Jocelyn. I think of the Prasad family, Norm and Beryl. Norm passed this week also. And so we think of him and their family. I think too of all of the children who have passed through the, the Sunday school and they can crowd. To me, they're crowding up on the altar. All the grown-ups are in the pews and around the back and around the sides. I think the children, the children are sitting on the altar. Some of them have angels' wings and halos on for Sunday school pageants, and, and, and others are wearing minion costumes. You know who you are. Walter has tinsel on his head, I think. He's allowed a special place on the altar with the children. I think also of all the people who have passed through for so many other things, the people at the WMRC. Remember Philip? Remember Judy, part of that group? Think of all the people who have passed through because of camp, all the children, all the teenagers. They're all here with us. And finally, I'd ask you now, now that we've invited them all, I would ask you that with every breath as you breathe out, you breathe out the light of love and of the spirit and let it fill the place more and more with that light. With each breath of all the people who are here, fill all the cracks and holes and and leaks, fill them all with light. Let that light grow and get bigger and bigger and cover, cover, cover all of this neighborhood. What we've called our parish as Beaconsfield and Kirkland. Of the places further that that have become a part of who we are, the whole of the West Island, really, people coming from all over. Let the light spread and cover. Let it get bigger and bigger, as big as you want to make it. And then I invite you to remember, remember and to know that wherever we are, wherever you are today, wherever we are next week and the week after. It's the same light. It's the same light and love that fills all of us and that we are trying to connect within and that we are trying to offer and spread wherever we are. Trouble went ahead, and it 
wasn't just a dream. All the trouble went away, and it wasn't just a dream. In the middle of the night, we try and try with all our might to light a little light down here. In the middle of the night, we dream of a million kites flying high above the sadness and the fear. Little sister, just remember as you wander through the blue, the little kite that you sent flying on a sunny afternoon, made of something light as nothing, made of joy that matters too. All the little dreams we dream are all we can really do. In Noble times with all its might, a little diamond colored blue. In the middle of the night, we keep sending little kites until. A reading from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1. It wasn't so long ago that you were mired in that old stagnant life of sin. You let the world, which doesn't know the first thing about living, tell you how to live. You filled your lungs with polluted unbelief and then exhaled disobedience. We all did it. All of us doing what we felt like doing, when we felt like doing it all of us in the same boat. It's a wonder God didn't lose his temper and do away with the whole lot of us. Instead, immense in mercy and with an incredible love, he embraced us. He took our sin-dead lives and made us alive in Christ. He did all this on his own, with no help from us. Then he picked us up and set us down in highest heaven in company with Jesus, our Messiah. Now God has us where he wants us, with all the time in this world and the next to shower grace and kindness upon us in Christ Jesus. Saving is all his idea and all his work. All we do is trust him enough to let him do it. It's God's gift from start to finish. We don't play the major role. If we did, we'd probably go around bragging what we'd done the whole thing. No, we neither make nor save ourselves. God does both the making and the saving. He creates each of us by Christ Jesus to join him in the work he does, the good work he has gotten ready for us to do. Work we had better be doing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the first song I ever wrote. And when we were talking about at the Zoom a couple weeks ago uh, about what songs we should maybe do today, Ike was so sweet to say, Marie, we have to do one of yours because it's been a part of who we are. So it felt smart and good to do the very first one. Yeah. 
from the book of John, chapter 3, beginning at verse 14. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the same way that Moses lifted the serpent in the desert so people could have something to see and then believe, it is necessary for the Son of Man to be lifted up. And everyone who looks up to him, trusting and expectant, will gain a real life, eternal life. I'm going to risk it, but you can still see me. This is how much God loved the world. He gave his son, his one and only son. And this is why, so that no one need be destroyed by believing in him, anyone can have a whole and lasting life, anyone. God didn't go to all the trouble of sending his son merely to point an accusing finger, telling the world how bad it was. He came to help, to put the world right again. Anyone who trusts in him is acquitted. Anyone who refuses to trust him has long since been under the death sentence without knowing it. And why? Because of that person's failure to believe in the one-of-a-kind Son of God when introduced to him. This is the crisis we're in. God light streamed into the world, but men and women everywhere ran for the darkness. They went for the darkness because they were not really interested in pleasing God. Everyone who makes a practice of doing evil, addicted to denial and illusion, hates Godlight and won't come near it, fearing a painful exposure. But anyone working and living in truth and reality welcomes Godlight, so the work can be seen for the God work it is. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ.
I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. I'm grateful to join you here this morning, uh, here in person, and with those of you at home or wherever you are watching from, as we say goodbye to this chapter of your Christian journey, to ministry in this particular place with all its memories. And as we move into the next one, already Marie has reminded us of the people who have been part of this place and have moved on to next chapters, some in heaven and some in other parts of the world. And we greet you if you're watching from very far away and have been part of this community. I know that it has not been easy to get to this day and that it is a sad day of loss of what has been a holy and life-giving and joy-giving sanctuary and a cold and drafty and leaky and moldy one. And that too. <laughs> and perhaps it's a relief to those who have worked so hard looking after the building and dealing with its surprises and its limitations and its needs. This past year of pandemic has really shown us more clearly, has reminded us that life is uncertain and short. The shortness and uncertainty of human life, it says in one of the wonderful prayers in the Book of Common Prayer. And it goes on to challenge us to rise up to the challenge of living fully while we're alive. But it has reminded us that life does not always go the way we want it or plan it, and that we are mortal. You know the hymn, the line that says, Change and decay in all around I see. O thou who changes not, abide with me. Today, you leave this place and set out on a new journey, seeking God's will for your community, resolved to continue to belong to Christ, to look for where you are being led to go and serve. Our journey through Lent reminds us to follow Jesus on his journey to the cross, to what his purpose and destiny was and still is for the world. To follow Jesus doesn't simply mean to sit and watch him on Zoom or television or YouTube. It means to learn. To follow Jesus means to learn, and learning includes listening. Sometimes we hear Jesus speak to us, and we're not sure that we want to hear what he just said. But as we learn from Jesus, we are each challenged to hear the call, to deny ourselves and take up our own cross, to hear God's call to each of us to serve him in the world, each of us with our gifts, talents, experiences, weaknesses. St. Mary's has continued to deepen and develop as a faithful congregation even while you wondered what was coming next. And finally, you discerned together that the time had come to leave this building, to hand it over to another community of faith that's raring to go. It's a step of faith. It's a sign of faithfulness, heading into the unknown, searching for the promised land at the bidding of God. It will be hard some days. It was hard for the people of Israel as they followed God's lead and Moses's into the promised land. As the people of Israel wandered in the desert, they got very cranky. They didn't like the food. They didn't like the water. They didn't like their leaders. They just wanted to go home. Now, you remember that home wasn't all that great. They were slaves in Egypt. But it was predictable, if limiting, and some of you even now are wondering, couldn't something have been done to stay here? 
Friends, we're not staying in Egypt. We're listening to God's call to go. Instead, you know, the people of Israel were following God into the great unknown and trusting him for their needs. And on the bad days, they rebelled against God and Moses. And the Bible says that God sent vipers into the camp, snakes who bit them. Some got sick and some died. And so they rebelled against God. God told Moses to make a bronze snake and put it on a pole. I don't like to look at snakes, do you? Well, when the people looked at the snake on the pole, they would be healed. It was the antidote to the snake bite. And our gospel reading makes a reference to that event. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness when the people of Israel rebelled and wanted to return to Egypt, Jesus is the antidote to our rebellion, to our wanting things our own way, to our separation from God, to sin, to the rebel heart. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him, whoever trusts in him, may have eternal life. Marie read it so beautifully from the message that condemnation is not part of God's plan for you and me. A life of trust and grace and hope and mercy and justice and peace is part of what God wants for us and part of what God wants to gush out of us so that others can taste it as well. Ephesians reminds us that it is by grace, through faith, through trust in God, that we are saved. By God's free gift that comes to us when we lean into the possibility that God can forgive us, that God can redeem us, that God loves us so much that he wants to drag us away from condemnation. And it's not our own doing. It's not the, it is the gift of God. It's not our soup making. It's not our baking. It's not our leading services. It's not our fixing roofs and packing stuff up and moving it away. All of that we do because we're free. Not so that we will be free. So it's not the result of your good deeds or your knowledge or your courage. It's just God. It's God's idea. Just Jesus. Crucified, risen, ascended, glorified. It begins with Jesus taking sin into his own body on the tree. Just God's love poured out for us. Filling us, healing us, calling us, moving us. It's not a spectator sport to be a Christian. It's the sharing of a gift that cannot be contained. Not in our own bodies, not in our sanctuaries. It's a powerful force that needs to be shared beyond these walls. Now, Richard will be reading a prayer by Eric Milner White, who was an Anglican priest born in 1884, who experienced the pandemic of 1918, known as the Spanish flu. He was a British Anglican priest, academic, and decorated military chaplain. He was a founder of the Oratory of the Good Shepherd, an Anglican dispersed community. And he served as its superior from 1923 to 1938. He died in the early 60s. When he was the dean of King's College, Cambridge, Maria, like this, he planned the first festival of nine lessons and carols for Christmas Eve. Same guy. Uh, we, we knew that from the nine lessons and carols. I didn't put it together. 
I think I had told Richard. Damn. Okay. Uh, you should marry Tom. Told me. Told <laughs> so in 1918, he organized and ran the first festival of lessons and nine lessons and carols. He was 34 and had just been appointed the Dean of Kings after experience as an army chaplain, which had convinced him that the Church of England needed more imaginative worship. Woo. I think he's your patron saint, maybe. I think, that might be true. Except he was an Anglo-Catholic. That's, okay. That's good. <laughs> um, Eric Milner White knew this. He knew about living with the unknown, and when you hear the prayer, you'll get it. He knew about ministering during a pandemic. In wartime, he served in the First World War and through all the societal changes that went on until the 60s when he died. And he knew about belonging to Jesus and serving him with his whole self and about the need for a community with which to do it. He founded the Oratory of the Good Shepherd, which is this dispersed community of single men and their associate friends. And Bishop Bruce Myers and Archdeacon Edward Simonton are two current members of that, current day members of that international community. So I want to say to you um, of St. Mary's, thank you. Thank you for staying together. Thank you for looking for God's leadership. Thank you for stepping out faithfully now. Thank you for your courage. It's going to take a lot more courage as you figure out who are we when we don't actually have a building with a sign and a name on it. May you find joy and excitement as you set out for the strange land of church without this building. It's a new land. And this is Joy Sunday in Lent, by the way, yeah. Laetare Sunday. So I wish you much joy as you discover that God has gone ahead of you, that this was God's idea and not just a desperate move. May you find much joy and excitement as you set out for the strange land of church without this building to where God is leading you in the next few years. Try to keep your eye on Jesus. When things get cranky, as they may, look to Jesus. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness as the antidote to snake bite, so Jesus is the antidote to our rebellious hearts, to our distance from God, to our disappointments. Try to keep your eyes on Jesus and not on the past and your memories of it. Amen. Amen.
church for those who need it pray for Bishop Mary for Archdeacon Michelle for all those who are in um, positions of leadership in a really difficult time for the church we pray for our parish that you will guide our steps forward You'll always keep the hope that is there in front of us. We give you our memories of this past year. As we do week by week, we pray for those who still are working so hard against COVID, the doctors, the nurses, those behind the scenes. We pray for all those we might know who lost someone with COVID or who've been affected by it, for those whose lives are turned upside down. And as we do week by week, we bring to you anybody we know who suffers in body, mind or spirit. We name them in our hearts or out loud. Oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go forward with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. So Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
May the peace of God reign in all our places. The love of God forever hold us tight. May the Spirit of God flow through our lives and the joy of God uphold us day and night. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you. Catholic and Apostolic Church, in all times and places of which St. Mary's is a part, we pray. We give our, our thanks, thanks and praise. praise to the people who founded this congregation, who made personal sacrifices in order for it to grow and flourish, and who used their talents and skills in building up a community of faith, we pray. We give, we give our, our thanks, thanks and praise for St. Mary's continuing ministries throughout its life its gatherings for praise, prayer, and sacrament, and its study of the scriptures, we pray. We give we our thanks, thanks and praise. For this building that has sheltered the people of St. Mary's, that the memory of this place will continue to inspire devotion to God, who makes all things possible, we pray. We give, we give our, our thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. For all who have been a part of the ministry of St. Mary's throughout its life, and for all who have died and now rest in you. We give you thanks, rejoicing that we are joined together in one eternal communion. We pray. We give, we give our, our thanks, thanks and praise. praise. And now, as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We who are gathered here know that this building, which has been consecrated and set apart for the mystery of God, for the ministry of God's holy word and sacraments, will no longer be used in this way, but will be used for other purposes. For many, this building has been hallowed by cherished memories, and we know that some will suffer a sense of loss. We pray that they will be comforted by the knowledge that the presence of God is not tied to any place or building. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Whereas St. Mary's Church Kirkland 
is no longer used for acts of worship. And whereas the church building and the land upon which it is erected cease to be used for sacramental ministry, now therefore we, Mary, by divine permission, Bishop of Montreal, do declare that St. Mary's Church in Kirkland, once duly dedicated and consecrated to the divine worship of Almighty God, has by virtue of this our sentence lost said dedication and consecration. Given under our hand and seal this 14th day of March in the year of our Lord, 2021, and in the sixth year of our consecration. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, in your great goodness, you once accepted to your honor and glory this building, now deconsecrated. Receive our praise and thanksgiving for the blessings, help, and comfort which you bestowed upon your people in this place. Continue, we pray, your many mercies in your church, that we may be conscious at all times of your unchanging love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Assist us mercifully, O Lord, in these our prayers, and dispose the way of your servants towards the attainment of everlasting salvation, that among the swift and varied changes of this world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. At the end, we sing the Lord's My Shepherd. Thank you. This is our last song to sing, people. Lord's My Shepherd. Of course, the lyrics are from Psalm 23. The tune is a newer one, uh, but it's become loved by many. Favorite of Jane, for sure. Lord, too. Many others. Thank you for being with us today. We'll see you next week.
into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Give to no one evil for evil, but support the weak. Comfort the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of God's Holy Spirit at work in you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you, remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.